I'd like to call this Tuesday, October 6, 2020 meeting uh, to order of the Oldsmar City Council. Uh, first item on the agenda, next two item on the agenda is uh, invocation and pledge of allegiance, which will be led by our city attorney. Please rise. Our Heavenly Father, we meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, and to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future, as well as the rights and needs of both the individual and our community. As trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts here today. This we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, before we get started tonight, as you know, uh, we are practicing social distancing uh, with uh, following the CDC guidelines. And so we'd ask that while you're in the audience that you keep your uh, face mask on. Uh, the only exception to that is if you're up at the podium speaking, you're spread out far enough that you'd be okay. I also should uh, note that uh, Council Member Norris is calling in, and so she is on the phone at this time. All right. First item on the next item on the agenda is the citizens open forum. The only thing that we ask is that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. Give your name and address, include your city. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight, so uh, you could speak about anything that you'd like. And so, is there anybody on this side of the room? Steve. My wife gets upset if I don't stand up straight, so <laughs> correct me if that happens. You look straight. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council, uh, City Attorney, City Manager, Assistant City Manager, and Staff. Uh, my name is Steve Graber. I live at 660 Tamarind Lane in Oldsmar. I'm here tonight to officially announce my candidacy for seat one on Oldsmar City Council. Um, since my wife Kelly and I decided to raise our two kids here in Oldsmar, I've done everything I could to get involved with the city. Uh, I started by becoming a friend of the Oldsmar Library, became a member of the Oldsmar Historical Society, currently serve on the Board of Adjustment, the Vice Chair of the Ordinance Review Committee. I've also been able to branch out countywide, and I serve on the Citizens Advisory Committee of Forward Pinellas. I'm also pretty certain I'm considered a regular at city council meetings, but that would be up to all of you uh, for that designation. Um, the reason I did it is because I grew up in a political family. My father was a councilman in the town that I grew up in. My family has extensive involvement in public service, whether it's through elected office or through community involvement in general. So I've been waiting to do this my entire life. Um, the relationships that I've been able to establish and my wife and I have been able to establish with our neighbors, with council members, with other volunteer board members, with city staff, made deciding to run a very easy one, something that I wanted to do and something I've been working toward by doing all that work. I want to thank all the citizens that I was able to speak with during the qualifying period and all the conversations we got to have. I look forward to continuing to have those as the campaign process unfolds. I know that March 9th is coming quickly. Uh, there's a lot of work to do between now and then, but I couldn't be more thankful to everyone who's helped me get the opportunity to do that work. That's all I had tonight, Mayor. I thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you, and congratulations on qualifying. That's a tough task to go through. We've all been through it up here, some of us more than others, but or more often, I should say. Anyway, congratulations. Congratulations. We have some excellent people running. All right. Uh, do we have anybody else on this side of the room? All right. Uh, anyone on this side? Dave Tookie. Dave Tookie, 505 Arlington Avenue East, Oldsmar. Um, I want to talk about three items tonight, two very quickly. Um, item nine about the golf carts. And I know I had an email discussion with the mayor and I think it was shared with everybody about the governing rules for using the, the carts in, in the city and 
the, the violations that, that I see all the time and sometimes scary with the carts crossing Tampa Road, uh, carts with very little children in the front seat, or carts being driven by very underage uh, people. Um, and I know the last time there was a lot of discussion about carts, this goes back a ways. We found out that when people go to get their, their um, registration of their cart, it's a form or I forget exactly how it is, but the rules are in the ordinance and the rules are in the um, overriding state statute. These aren't shared with the people as they get their registration for the cart. So unless they actually go look to see what the rules truly are, they don't know. Um, and, and I suggested that, that we make it part of the process that when they get their registration, um, I'm sure it wouldn't cost a whole lot to hand them a copy of the rules and say, here's what you must abide by, and if you don't, the people with the guns and the blue lights are going to uh, talk to you about it. So just a quick thing on that item there. I know it's not gonna be part of the resolution of item nine there, but uh, something to think about. Um, the next one was the, the rules of procedure for the council as far as electronically attending a meeting. And I didn't see anything in the rule that said when would this be approved. I know for absences, there's a time when the absence must be approved. I don't even remember if it's before or after. Um, and I'm assuming it would have to be approved beforehand so the um, coordination can take place, but there's nothing in the rule that you're gonna discuss tonight that actually says when will that be approved that a member can attend electronically. Um, last thing I wanna talk about is the, the main reason I'm here is item two with the uh, a new developer coming to look at the property next to the, on St. Pete Drive between the library and, and uh, State Street. And, and I know you're gonna think, oh, this is NIMBYism, uh, but please remember that the city changed the rules. That property was all zoned single family for years and years and years. And as the city started buying it up and started deciding to, to look for developers for that, the zoning, land use, everything was changed back in there so that what was going to be just possibly single family homes can now be multifamily. There's, there's many other things can go there. So sure it's an NIMBYism in it to, to some extent, but maybe it's more like we're just looking to look out for our community, our neighborhood um, in Arlington. And I'm not here speaking on behalf of any of the neighbors. I'm, I'm stating my opinions here. And I only ask that as we enter these negotiations that all the items that were brought up previously and it was a different council at the time, that all these other items are still remembered. The issues with School Street, the issues with the empty lot on Arlington, being a part of it, not being a part of it. Um, you know, when the town center plan first went in, there was a lot of discussion about transitional lots between items like such as fronting on St. Pete Drive, that between there and the residential neighborhoods that there be some transition in there that doesn't just bring that development right up to the backyards of, of the single family residences. And that's anywhere within the town center. Um, we talked about buffering last time th this whole process was going on between the development and the homes on Arlington. Um, and I already mentioned School Street and a lot in Arlington. So I just ask that, um, you know, the newer members get caught up maybe in, on, um, you know, what has previously taken place. Um, those of you were, that were here before, and obviously the city manager was all part of that previous thing that, that these items not be forgotten. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you Is there anybody else on this side of the room? Yes. Um, Devin Stradling Duncan, 636 Timber Bay Circle East Oldsmar. Um, I'm item eight on the agenda, actually. I just wanted to let you know that I'm here in case you had any questions. For I later. guessed that that was you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'll call you up. Yeah. Okay. Just Thank wanted you. to let you know I was here. I appreciate it. All right. Anybody else on this side of the room? All right, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the Citizens Open Forum. The next item on the agenda is a community minute, which will be announced by our city clerk. And Nixon. Uh, yes, there are three items. There's a movie in the park, free family-friendly movie at Ari Olds Park on Friday, October 16th, beginning at 6 o'clock. Bring a picnic bank basket and blanket, social distancing required, and there will be golf cart parking available. Make sure they're registered. 
And then the talent show registration, the annual talent show registration deadline is Friday, October 23rd. This year's show will be held on Friday, November 6th, beginning at 6.30 at Ari Olds Park. And of course, social distancing is required. And then Haunted Happenings, free drive through event at the Oldsmore Sports Complex on Friday, October 30th from 7 to 9, playing a family family ghoulish fun with social distancing. And I know that there will be some witches there. <laughs> witches? I've heard that. That's scary. That's scary. All right. Uh, yeah, and you know, a special thank you to our staff for working and going that extra mile to get these events on. It's difficult under these conditions, and some places are just flat out not doing them, and and uh, our staff has found a way to get some stuff going again. So uh, congratulations, and uh, we appreciate the extra effort. Mm -hmm. All right, next item on the agenda is approval of additional new agenda items. Item 215-16, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I second. have a motion, do I have a second? Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Aye. Slow down for that one. You know, I keep doing that. All right. Awards and recognition, item number one, presentation of council manager award for September 2020. And council member Dan Siraki will be presenting that. Thank you very much, Mayor. You're welcome. Give him a round of applause. Come on. It's too quiet. In here. Testing. All right, this is this is working. The Council Manager Award is a very special thing for me. And as a city council member, I love giving this award to someone in our community. And this this award, this time, I'm giving it to my neighbor and my friend, Scott Roper. Scott, can you come up? All right, Scott, I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna explain because Scott has asked me three times what this award's for. So I'm gonna read this to you and then I'm gonna give that to you. Scott was born in Knoxville, Tennessee and he moved to Florida shortly thereafter. I guess you were pretty young, like three months. Growing up in Clearwater, he attended Countryside High School and went on to study electrical engineering at the University of South Florida. He received his professional engineering license in 2012 and stays current with emerging technology and trends in the engineering world. Married for 13 years, Scott's wife, Kim, works as a financial advisor and they have two children, Carson, age seven, and Hayden, age five. They enjoy traveling, scuba diving, and watching football in their free time. Scott is an electrical engineer and partner at MPS Engineering here in Oldsmar. MPS Engineering has been in business for 36 years and a local Oldsmar business for 19 years. They are best known for their detailed design plans for new and remodeled or renovated construction projects and have designed over 4,000 projects in the past 36 years. Their projects have included converting the Oldsmar Historical Bank Building into the Oldsmar Council Chambers, where, we, where we're standing right here right now. So Scott was involved in that, fantastic. They also worked on the Oldsmar Library, the Hampton Inn Suites on Tampa Road. Scott has been a resident for nine years. I first met Scott when I was on the East Lake Oaks Community Development District Board and I decided to leave to run for city council, just like you heard from Steve today. And Scott started coming to the meetings. And I thought, who is this guy, you know? He cares, he's motivated about our community. He loves our neighbors. So that's what really got me involved in understanding who Scott was. Scott joined, then right after that, Scott joined the HOA meeting and became a member with me as the president of the board. And right after that, in 2016, Scott was elected the chairman of the Community Development District, the CDD, by his peers. To, to me, Scott was like a breath of fresh air to meet someone who cared about his neighborhood and was willing to get involved. I wanna read some of Scott's accomplishments as he's been on the board with me and as on the Community Development District. 
He helps organize and run our yearly block party. He's focused on updating our bylaws. He has worked very hard and actually went door to door to visit our neighbors to get votes from each homeowner to sign proxies. He implemented the new fence and gate system at our pool, which we needed because we had so much vandalism going on, chairs, everything. He took care of that, which took a while, but we got it done. Just recently, last week, two, last two weeks, he launched a new key fob system. His kids helped with that. They actually put these key fobs in these little packets, and we and Scott actually organized volunteers in our neighborhood to take one to each house so that we could get rid of the old key system because all the old neighbors had the keys from years back, and now we have a new key system and a new security camera system, and Scott folks helped get that done. He loves getting to know his neighbors and is passionate about improving the neighborhood in the city of Oldsmar. Now you ask me what this award's for. Back in 2010, when I became the president of the HOA in East Lake Oaks, the mayor at that time, Jim Ronecker, and council member Doug Beavis presented me with that award. And I was just like you. I had no idea what that award was until I got here. And after I got that award, I really learned about you know, how much I cared about East Lake Oaks and how much I cared about my community and about the city of Oldsmar. And Scott, I just want to tell you this, I actually, from working with you, I actually will see you someday up there on this board. I believe you will be here someday. So it gives me honor to present you the September 2020 Oldsmar Council Manager Award to Scott Roper. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, you guys want to come up? Uh, just a <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the photo op. Gotta get the kids. You got to get that. Oh, do one with masks on. Is that what you do? Yeah, masks on. Mm -hmm. One on. Okay, guys, everybody smile. Everyone <laughs> smile with your eyes. Okay. And yeah. I want to take one more. Okay, one more. All right, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, congratulations, Scott. Well deserved. Well deserved. It uh, makes a difference when people get in, involved in the local community, and it just makes our whole town better. So, well deserved. Nice job, Councilman. Very good. Next item on the agenda is the Community Redevelopment Agency, item number two, authorize the city manager to enter negotiations with Devin S. Rochnell LLC for the purpose of entering into a development agreement for city-owned property at the intersection of State Street East and St. Pete Drive. It's a new agenda item. I don't know if the city uh, manager would like to add anything to uh, this or this is No, sir. I think right. the cover memo is pretty self-explanatory. Pretty self-explanatory. So for those who don't know the way our process works, let me just share with you. When there's somebody who has an appetite uh, in uh, developing something that is currently a city-owned piece of property, this is the very first step that takes place, where they come and they send a letter to the city manager. The city manager then brings that to us, and we authorize them to go on and get into a discussion and uh, start the process, and ultimately that comes back to us. And uh, I would like to comment uh, uh, just that for those of you who don't know, um, uh, uh, John Buse is a, is a, works together as a partner uh, uh, with this organization. So it's a good local name, and they've done a lot of other stuff over here before. So uh, at this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? My only concern was the existing negotiations going on um, uh, for the uh, one corner piece for the potential hotel, but I'm, you know, no development agreement is before us yet, so no purchase and sale agreement yet. So I'm curious to see um, what um, Mr. Rushnell and Mr. Buse are proposing here. And some uh. more specifics. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the process. I'm, uh, after this uh, discussion and this vote, I am going to ask for an update on what's going on with Cohen Investments, sure. just so we know. And, all right. Uh, any other discussion? Sure, Mayor. 
I uh, met with Al and Felicia about this project, and actually, uh, as I mentioned a couple city council meetings ago about Andrew's neighborhood, I'm very pleased the way that whole project has turned out, and I'm actually very excited about this project and looking forward to, like you said, hear what, ha what they have got to offer us. Excellent, excellent. Any other discussion? Just quickly. I would like to make the comment, Mr. Mayor, if possible. Yeah, Councilman. Good. Okay, I am, I too am um, in favor of this. I do, um, I am encouraged that Cohen is still in the mix, but what I really do like is John Buse has always done beautiful projects and that it appears that he would still be willing to purchase the rest of the property and do a smaller project. So I'm full in favor of this. Okay, Councilmember Knapp. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to close it out, I'm very familiar with the product that uh, Mr. Rushnell and Buse are uh, entertaining for us this evening and uh, looking forward to the prospect of it. And uh, as Mr. Tilke referenced before, I think those are things that we'll all, I'm sure, keep in mind as, as that product gets presented to us in finer detail in the future. So looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. And the only comment that I would have to add is that until we have a development agreement with anybody, we have no deal with anybody other than words and expression of interest in that. So that's, you know, to be clear, we have no development agreement on that piece of property with anyone at this time. And so that's where we're at with it right now. All right, uh, any other discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote, uh, roll call. Council Member Saraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Norris? Yes. Vice Mayor Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Item number two, authorize city manager to enter negotiations with Devin S. Rational LLC for the purpose of entering into a development agreement for city-owned property at the intersection of State Street East and St. Petersburg Drive. Passes with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Thank you. So can I get a uh, brief update on where we stand with uh, Cohen Investments? Yes, sir. Uh, we're still in the process of negotiating for a development agreement with Cohen Investments. We recently received... A um, lot of information towards the site plan and uh, drainage plan, and I would say it's accelerating. We will be bringing that back to you as soon as we review it, and at um, some point then the council can make a decision on whether to proceed. But I'd say it's accelerating in its intent. We had a delay for COVID the way we, most everybody has, but uh, the developer is full steam ahead now. Okay. Well, good. We'll have some decisions to make. All right. All right. Next item on the agenda, consent docket, which will be announced by our city clerk. Item number three, approved minutes of the September 1st, 2020 work session on capital improvement projects. Item number four, approved minutes of the September 3rd, 2020 city council meeting. And item number five, approved minutes of September 15th, 2020 city council meeting. Is there anybody who wishes to pull anything from the consent docket? Chair will entertain a motion to approve as presented. So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next section, aye. City Bowls tomorrow. Item number six, presentation of fire prevention week proclamation. Our council member Knapp will be presenting that. Thank you, Mayor. Is the fire chief coming up? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, could both come up. Come on, man. We're paying we're paying the full freight. We want the full show. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Looks great. I know. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I will be reading this proclamation. The 2020 Fire Prevention Week. Whereas the city of Oldsmar Whereas the city of Oldsmar is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Oldsmar, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas home fires killed 2,630 people in the United States in 2017, according to the National Fire Protection Association. And fire departments in the United States responded to 357,000 home fires. And whereas, cooking is the leading cause of home fires in the United States. 
Two of every five home fires start in the kitchen, with 31% of these fires resulting from unattended cooking. And whereas more than half of reported non-fatal home cooking fire injuries occurred when the victims tried to fight the fire themselves. And whereas children under five face a higher risk of non-fire burns associated with cooking than being burned in a cooking fire. Oldsmar's residents should stay in the kitchen when frying food on the stovetop, keep a three-foot kid-free zone around cooking areas, and keep anything that can catch fire away from the stove from stovetops. And whereas Oldsmar's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme serve up fire safety in the kitchen effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Knapp, on behalf of Eric Seidel, Mayor of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 4th through 10th, 2020, as Fire Prevention Week throughout the city and urge all the people of Oldsmar to check their kitchens for fire hazards, use safe cooking practices, and support the many public safety activities and efforts of Oldsmar's fire and emergency services, dated this sixth day of Olds uh, October 2020. Yeah, come on, Chief. <laughs> well, where's, where's the mic? Dave was supposed to do this part, but I guess I'll do it. You're right there's cover. Should I just am I on? Yeah. Tap it. You got to tap it. The top. I just stand here? You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it was covered. Just you know, like you said, it's a leading cause of fire, so it's um you know focus for this year. Uh, there is a website, firepreventionweek.org, that people can go to to um learn about some other safety tips. So we encourage people to do that. Very good, so. very good. Well, we appreciate all your hard work, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Item number seven, uh, consider appointment of Brenda Ginikos as alternate member of the planning board. I do not see her here. Now, how many of you know Gina's maiden name? I'm guessing it's maiden. What now? Gina or? I don't. Yeah, Hatfield. Oh. Did you realize that? No. What is it? Gina, no, excuse me, uh, Brenda Hatfield. Oh, oh really? my gosh. Oh. That's the Brenda we're talking about? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. You're kidding me. Oh, I, don't, I would never kid you. I should you. have recognized by her address. Yeah, anyhow. Well, good. Well, well as you all know, that, yeah. that is the reason she doesn't have to be here. I was say she right. have to be so here. we have this policy where if we've if we've not met, uh, we ask you to come and and, and meet That's council and, and so forth. Um, That's funny. Of course, we've treated that a little bit different because of the pandemic and just playing it extra safe. Uh, but uh, in any event, I know she'll do a, a great job. So That's fantastic. at this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you for serving, Brenda. Thank you, thank you. All mm -hmm. right, since you're all ready to vote, all signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion aye. passes. All right, item number eight, consider the appointment of Devin Stradling Duncan as the ex officio team member of the planning board. Devin, come on up. <laughs> all right. You can take your mask off, pull it down if you'd like. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay, so I've lived in Oldsmar for, I think it's eight years now. Nice. I went to Oldsmar Elementary for second through fifth grade. It's an amazing school. I love it. Mm. Um, awesome. Car wise for middle school, and now I'm currently at East Lake High doing the my PCS option. Okay. So, um, I have an interest in 
civics and politics and all that stuff. So when I saw this on the website, because actually it's a funny story, my mom was fed up with her job and she was looking for um, a library uh -huh. position. Mm -hmm. She saw this and showed it to me and I thought it would be really cool. Well, excellent. Great. Well, excellent. Well, I people are, yeah, yeah, how people find out about. And, and how old are yeah. you? I am 15. 15. Wow. All right. Well, that's exciting. Well, we appreciate you stepping up. We're glad that your mom saw it. I'm not happy she wasn't happy with her job, but <laughs> she's you know, fine now. She's <laughs> probably good. It just worked out to our benefit. That's but great. Mm -hmm. Thank all right, you I'm going to entertain a motion. Uh, Chair, will entertain a motion. I got a motion by Norris. Do I have second. a second? Second, second by Nap. Uh, discussion. Welcome. Thank I would you. like to say something, Mr. Mayor. Go right ahead. I think it's wonderful to see teenagers, Devin, you're, you're, you're really stepping up for your community to see teenagers want to get involved at such an early age. And I also appreciated staff including the resolution that showed that um, Mayor Beaverland was the one that did it in 1996. So um, thank you so much, Devin. We welcome your, your input into our city. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? I just want to say, David, I, I wish I would have, Devin, I would have done it when I was your age. So I, I'm, I'm really excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. They wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have had me when I was your age. <laughs> <laughs> just let's leave it there. All right. Say to you, you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. Well, congratulations. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Devin, for coming tonight. Um, just. To check, I can go now because yes. there's a yeah. toddler at home yeah. that needs to. Sure. That's all right. That's all right. You're good to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. all right. Next section of the agenda is a city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Item number nine is adopt resolution 2020-34, establishing a fee for the annual registration of golf carts operating on city streets. I'll read that resolution by title only. Resolution 2020-34, resolution of the City of Oldsmar, I'm sorry, the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, establishing a fee for the annual registration of golf carts operating on city streets and providing for an effective date hereof. You'll remember that pursuant to your adoption of Ordinance 2020-11, you modified the terms um, of that particular uh, code section relating to golf carts, and specifically in Code Section 66-106, you provided that the annual registration fee would be set forth by resolution. The purpose of this resolution is to accomplish that task. Excellent. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Curious. Council Member Gannon. Thank you. I, I'm curious as to your, uh, everybody's thoughts on providing either a written copy or a link maybe to a digital copy, maybe a PDF version of I think it's great, uh, the, the, the safety rules, rules and the statute, uh, just so people are on notice if they're not already that there are penalties, criminal penalties. Right, Dinah? For violating those rules. I think it's a good idea. I mean, I almost wonder when you fill out the little paperwork that I they have, have to sign. I have re I received. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't imagine it costs as much to do. You know, I'm all for waivers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> coverage. I coverage. can't help myself. <laughs> oh, you're just full of fire and stuff. Anybody else have any comments? Do we have a, maybe a web page for that? Just a website? We can just go to one web page, myoldsman.com. Is it sure there already? Yeah. yeah. We'll make that happen. Perfect. Right? All right. Any other discussion? All right. So, you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item oh, number 10. So item number 10 is the adopt resolution 2020-36, adopting rules of procedure for the city council. I'll go ahead and read this resolution by title only. Resolution 2020-36, a resolution of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, adopting rules of procedure for the City Council of the City of Oldsmar and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the reading of Resolution 2020-36 by title only. Um, as some background to this, you'll remember that you have been operating under a set of rules of procedure that have been adopted over a period of time. There have been three specific uh, adoptions, and those were in 1990, 1995, and 1996. There have been no changes to the rules of procedure since that date. And also uh, was a surprise to me to find out that all of these rules had been adopted only by motion of the council. They had not been adopted by way of a resolution. That doesn't make it any less a rule, uh, just that if we had a little bit more formality, it would be easier to find uh, when we do searches in the future, and it'll be easier to revise when we do that as well. So in the, in the resolution itself, I just want to go through some changes that I've made to the rules as they originally were provided to update them a little bit, because over the last 20-some years, there have been a few changes in the world. 
Um, and although that you don't see them in your packet, I wanna just make sure that you understand what I have done. Specifically, what I've done was is to try to make the, um, the rules um, basically con conforming all the way through, so all the headings have been retyped. Also, we changed the street addresses where we actually meet. When the rules were originally adopted, it provided that it was at 106 State Street West, and now we're, of course, at 101. <laughs> so um, we've changed that in a couple of different locations. That's in paragraphs two and three of the rules. Um, I've also changed the uh, notice requirements in paragraph four, a, it used to read that we would post the notices for the meetings on a bulletin board at City Hall and at council chambers, and then a telephone call would be made to each newspaper and person who was filled out a written request to notice of the city clerk. We took all that, I took out all that language, and I just added in the words uh, city website, so it's gonna be posted on the city website, so there is not that requirement to call the newspaper every single time, or to post it on a bulletin board that doesn't exist. Um, also in the next paragraph, paragraph B, emergency meetings, um, I had added that emergency meetings could be noticed by way of email or delivered. Um, instead of requiring that it be left at each council member's uh, usual dwelling place. Um, I also changed the uh, language that says that the notice of the meeting shall be given by email instead of by telephone in that same paragraph. Further on down in the rules, there were some there were some language in uh, the old paragraph number nine that referred to when it was adopted and when it was amended. Those dates in 1990 and 1995, I have uh, re removed that. I've also removed the heading um, for the adopted Snyder hearing procedures. Um, and just relabeled it quasi-judicial proceedings before the city council. The most significant change in the rules uh, is the requested rule by the council at one of the la at a recent meeting to require in-person attendance. I've added that in paragraph 10, which is page six, I believe in your packet. It specifically reads, and it is titled in-person attendance, council members shall be physically present at regular meetings and work sessions unless attendance by uh, uh, communications technology presence is approved by a majority vote of the council or by executive order of the mayor during a local state of emergency. Um, as for Mr. Tilke's comment relative to when is it done, it would have to be done in advance. You can't get excused for a meeting because you wouldn't, uh, yeah, we after wouldn't, the time, because we you wouldn't, wouldn't let you dial in. You, you, we wouldn't, you wouldn't let anybody dial in, correct? Um, so changes in the headings throughout the rest of the, the document. Um, and then that, those were the changes that I had made. Um, keeping in mind that these, resol this, these rules of procedure can be amended at any time. Um, you can do it next week or next meeting that you have, so don't feel like just because this is, this is being considered and adopted this week that you can't make the changes in the future. That can always be done. Um, and I will give you an example. The city of Dunedin, on an annual basis, they have a specific workshop meeting where they set aside a couple of hours to go over the rules of procedure and they make changes to it every single year. It doesn't mean that you have to. Obviously it hasn't been done since 1996, but some cities do that. So I wanna let you know that obviously you can change your rules at any time or add to them or subtract from them. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, otherwise it's ready for your consideration. But you know what, let me get a motion on the floor to accept as presented. So moved. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. A motion and a second, any discussion? Council Member Sirac. First of all, I would like to say, Mayor, thank you for bringing this up. I really had no idea that we that Tom would make so many changes to this. I think this is a great uh, a great process to get get fixed. You know, really, that's all I have. Thank Perfect. you, Council Member Gannon, Vice Mayor Gannon. Excuse me. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, uh, two years ago at our planning conference, there was a discussion about. Um, making some changes to our quasi-judicial procedure and tightening up some things. I don't, I just wanna kind of 
put that out there that maybe at a future meeting we could do exactly as our city attorney has proposed and make some of those changes and do that. Tonight I really only wanted to talk about um, paragraph 10, which is the in-person attendance paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, the way that it reads, council members shall be physically present at regular meetings and work sessions unless attendance by communications technology presence is approved by a majority vote, yada, yada. The word presence, I did. I had to read it a couple of times because I was like, is the word presence redundant? Attendance mm -hmm. by communications technology is approved. I just questioned that one word other than that. I thank you, Tom, for going through and um, making the changes. And I, I would absolutely be in favor of reviewing this on an annual or um, biannual basis to um, make sure that it's up to date technology and things are a changing. All right. Uh, Council Member Norris, any comments? Um, I actually had a, a talk with Tom about this, and all I needed to hear was that Tom agrees with these changes, and also I agree with um, everyone that it has been, you know, it's been time for us to go ahead and put this more in more of an official version. So, um, yeah, I'm in favor. Council Member Knapp? Uh, just one other question in regards to item 10 in there, um, in regards to the executive orders. Uh, for example, would an executive order by the governor or anything else need to be included, or would that supersede any other local action by us? But that would that was my only question about that item as well. I, I would assume that it would depend on the circumstances. So if the governor had basically issued an executive order that says that you can meet by communications technology, you're going to meet by communications technology. Um, so, but the way that it that it was, it's currently uh, worded is is that communications technology could be used um, during this, you know, window of opportunity. Um, but um, once we get out of this window of opportunity, that is no longer there, and so you, you have to have a rule to address it. Um, and in the past, I've always taken the position that nobody should be attending by telephone or communications technology because there is no provision for it under the law except for those two attorney general opinions that says that it can be done in emergency situations. So, um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but if the governor says that you can do it, yes, it overrides what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Understood. Thank you. And as for the word presence, um, you know, we can take the word presence out to take, take out that it, 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 I think it sounds clearer if you leave it out, to, to tell you the truth. So okay. If I can take it out, I'll do that. All right. Strike the presence. All right. So uh, let's see. Who made the motion? Me. All right. Um, do you want to just withdraw your motion? I would like to withdraw my motion and make a new motion to approve these rules and procedures as presented with the small amendment of striking the word presence from item line item 10 paragraph 10. I second. A motion and a second very good all right and so the only comment that I have is um, a and I I'm, Tom I'm gonna I'm gonna not challenge you per se but clarification if the governor signs an executive order that says we are permitted to meet by um, uh, electronic means that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to that we have to we right. have a rule in place that says only if mm -hmm. we decide that's what we're going to do that's correct okay yeah. i want that for clarification i will tell you all something i noticed on here i know tom probably did uh how many of you noticed the public hearing order the, the wait the, the order of uh, process in the public hearing <laughs> you notice that mm -hmm. that as well uh, applicant the chair the chair has been allowing the the public to speak when we don't have a motion before so oh. that'll change uh. just all right yeah. so uh anyhow so we have a motion and a second uh sensing you're all ready to vote uh, all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed aye. motion passes can I move on? Okay. Item number 11. All right, item number 11 is um, adopt resolution 2020-37, ratifying executive orders 2020-45 and 2020-46. I'll read that resolution by title only. Resolution 2020-37, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmore, Florida, ratifying executive order 2020-45, which provides for the extension of the COVID-19 state of emergency through September 21, 2020 
ratifying Executive Order 2020-46, which provides for the extension of the COVID-19 state of emergency through September 28, 2020, and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the reading of Resolution 2020-37 by title only. Thank you. Uh, does the Chair will entertain a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second that. Discussion. That's you're ready to vote. All in favor, signal high by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Got anything else for us, sir? No, thank you. All right. Hey, there's, there's no more executive orders coming out. I was going to say, way. no more state of emergency. No more state Me. of emergency. Al sent me a message, and I'm like, this is the mayor doing the happy dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in any event, all right, moving right along. Next, uh, next section is the city manager, item number 12. Thank you, Mayor. Item 12 is request council approval to waive bid requirements and authorize purchases for the repair, replacement, or supply of utility plant equipment from Mater Electric Motors per the Lee County contract number B190409 JJB on piggyback form 20 028. The work covered by the contract will include repair services for pumps located in lift stations, water reclamation facility, and reverse osmosis water treatment plant. The work will be completed based on bench rates which were provided in the Lee County bid and is valid through May 20th of 2021. Contract also covers the purchase of replacement pumps for projects, routine maintenance, and or emergency repairs. This contract will assist the public work staff in reacting to emergencies quickly, which oftentimes affect the health and safety of the public. Fiscal year 2021 estimate for this work is likely to exceed $25,000, which is why it came to council and funding is available in the 2021 budget for necessary expenses in various departments or divisions of the 401 fund. Staff recommends approval. All right, Chair will entertain a motion to approve. May Mayor make a motion Hello. to approve. I have a motion. Uh, I've got a motion from Norris, second from Siraki. Discussion. Got to be ready. I got to work. Got to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Setting, you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Get a shovel. Oof. Sorry. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> Item 13 is request council approval of the annual purchase of sodium hydroxide from Allied Universal Corporation under the same pricing terms and conditions as the Tampa Bay Water Cooperative bid on contract number 2020-024. Sodium hydroxide is used at the reverse osmosis water treatment plant for pH adjustment and provides alkalinity in the finished water when combined with carbon dioxide. Tampa Bay Water advertised for sodium hydroxide as a cooperative bid and awarded to Allied Universal Corporation. The first renewal of the contract is valid through September 30th, 2021, and is eligible for two additional one-year renewals. This is a cooperative bid sponsored by Tampa Bay Water and includes City of Oldsmar, City of Dunedin, and City of St. Petersburg. The contract unit price will be $452.95 per dry ton for 50% sodium hydroxide solution. The total purchase of sodium hydroxide from Allied University Universal Corporation will not exceed $90,000. Funds are available in the 401 fund and staff recommends approval. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. moved. I have a motion by Gannon, second by Knapp. Uh, discussion. That's when you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes, item 14. Item 14, another purchasing item. Request council approval to waive bid requirements and award Appalachian Materials Services Incorporated the sludge hauling and disposal services contract for the city's water reclamation facility, or WRF, under the same pricing terms and conditions as the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida bid number IFB-200049-B-JL dash 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 on piggyback form 20-021. AMS, Appalachian Material Services, is Oldsmar's current WRF biosolids hauling and disposal provider and has performed all contractual services satisfactorily. AMS has agreed to allow the city of Oldsmar to piggyback their current agreement with the city of Tarpon Springs, which is valid through March 12th of 2025. City's water reclamation facility projected annual sludge hauling is budgeted in an amount of not to exceed $150,000 for fiscal year 2021. Funding for this contract is in the water reclamation facility annual operating budget in the 401 fund and the contracted unit price for this service is $49.775 per ton. Staff recommends approval. Carol, will entertain a motion to approve. So move. I have a motion, Siraki, second. second. Cannon, discussion? When you think of $150,000 mm -hmm. divided by 49.775 per ton, 
That's a lot of tons. A lot of tons. That's a lot of tons. That's, a lot of tons. Uh, That's quite an operation. If you haven't toured that facility, I recommend Citizens Academy. I recommend touring mm -hmm. it. It's amazing. A lot of sludge. It is a lot of sludge. It's, yep. But it's really cool. Setting you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item 15. Item 15, another purchasing item requests council approval to waive bid requirements and authorize the purchase of carbon dioxide from Matheson Tri-Gas Incorporated under the same pricing terms and conditions as the Sarasota County contract number 191-784-HR on piggyback form 20-002. Carbon dioxide is added during the potable water treatment process at the reverse osmosis water treatment plant for alkalinity and pH adjustment. Matheson Tri-Gas Incorporated has agreed to extend the pricing terms and conditions of the Sarasota County contract to the city. The current contract went into effect on October 26, 2019 and is valid through October 25, 2022 at a rate of 0.0945 per pound of carbon dioxide. Funding for this chemical has been budgeted in the amount of $60,500 in the fiscal 2021 ROWTP operating budget in the 401 fund, and staff recommends approval. Have the chair entertain a motion to approve? So moved. Have a motion by Knapp? Second. Second by Gannon. Discussion? Fencing, you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes, item 16. All very important purchasing items. Here's one that's something different. <laughs> Item 16, request council approval to authorize the city manager to sign grant agreement with the state of Florida Department of Environmental Protection for the renovation of baseball, softball fields and concession structure at the Oldsmar Sports Complex. The baseball fields at the Oldsmar Sports Complex were constructed in 1994 and have provided countless opportunities for youth and adults to participate in athletic activities Various upgrades to the ball fields and infrastructure have taken place over the past 26 years and further improvements are still needed. 2018, the city applied for a $200,000 matching grant from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection through the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program, what we know as FERDAP. Unfortunately, funding did not become available then during that cycle, the application was put on hold. In 2019, the city reapplied and was awarded funding in July of this year. The funds from the grant will assist the city with modifications and upgrades to the baseball and softball fields, as well as the concession restroom building. The grant agreement makes reference to multiple attachments, which are standard additions to the agreement itself, and would be provided to council for specific review upon request, and staff recommends approval. All right, Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. I have a, a motion from Norris, a second from Knapp. Any discussion? About time. About time. Good. It's good. Good. Yeah. Keeping it. Keeping it good. Not remember when? Good. I remember when it was first built? Yeah. <laughs> I played there way back. Did you play there? I did. Mm -hmm. I played t-ball at Ari Olds Park. Did you really? I did. my brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow. And they moved us. Mr. Mayor, I would like to commend staff for um, getting these grants because it really helps our taxpayers when we get matching grants. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Good uh, job. Uh, any other comments? All right. Uh, Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying baseball. 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 All opposed. Baseball. All right. Motion passes. Item 17. Item 17, one last purchasing item. Request council approval to waive bid requirements and purchase sodium hypochlorite from Odyssey Manufacturing Company under the same pricing terms and conditions as the Tampa Bay Water Contract number 2019-005 on piggyback form 19-007. Sodium hypochlorite is an essential chemical for used for water disinfection in the respective treatment processes at both the reverse osmosis water treatment plant and the water reclamation facility. Facility. Odyssey Manufacturing Company has supplied the city of Oldsmar with sodium hypochlorite for several years, and Public Works staff have found the product, delivery, customer service to fully meet the city's needs. Tampa Bay Water, on the aforementioned contract with Odyssey, was approved by the Tampa Bay Water Board of Directors at their December 3rd, 2018 meeting. The initial contract period was January 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2019, and included the availability of three one year additional renewals. The second renewal is valid through September 30th, 2021, and contains Odyssey's agreement to offer the same pricing and terms and conditions to the city of Oldsmar. The contract unit price will be 48 cents per gallon per the second amendment to the Tampa Bay Water Agreement, number 2019-05. 
And the funding is available in the 401 fund and staff recommends approval. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion by Siraki. Second. Second by Knapp. Discussion. That's when you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. City Manager. That's it. That's it. You can tell we are at the beginning of the, the new fiscal year. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New yeah, Year. Ready. In comes all the uh, purchasing requests. You know, I, I always make a point of, of, of stating this for our citizens who are watching at home. You know, when we waive the bid requirements and go through this process, <coughs> it doesn't mean that it hasn't been bidded out. Uh, the odds are it's been bid before by somebody who's much larger in size, quite frankly. And so we still have that um, uh, process. Uh, but quite frankly, when you put that process on, I think a lot of people don't realize just how expensive it is to go through the bid process. And I think over the years, our staff has clearly identified that there is a uh, better way to leverage that buying power. So I mention that only because I get asked that every once in a while. How can you guys still put stuff out on bid? Well, it's already been on bid. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, City Clerk. Oh, I don't have anything tonight. Nothing else. Wow. All right. Good reporting. Excellent report. You got to really work with the city manager, would you? Um, next item. The city Council. Uh, item 18, approved tentative agenda for October 20, uh, 2020. Uh, is there anybody who wishes to pull anything from the tentative agenda? Not me. All right. All right. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, accept as presented. Motion to accept. Uh, motion to accept. Uh, okay. From Gannon. I'm second by Nat. Uh, any discussion? Attention, you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Item number 19, council comments. I'm going to start with uh, Council Member Norris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to let everybody know that I am on day nine of my 14-day quarantine, so I will be um, cleared and present at the next council meeting, and I look forward to seeing you all in person. And second, I would like to congratulate Council Member Knapp for qualifying and um, securing your seat for another three years. I know you've been campaigning for three different terms, three different years, so you and Nicole and LJ can take a break, so congratulations. And also, congratulations to Pamela Settle and Steve Graber for, qualifying for, for qualifying for seat one. Um, the citizens of Oldsmar are very fortunate to have two fine candidates, and thank you both for your willingness to serve. And the last thing I have is um, on behalf of the VFW Auxiliary 12186, we are always accepting new applications, and our next meeting is next Wednesday on the, on the 15th, 2020. And then my, myself and other officers and Commander Bear and some of the VFW officers will be attending the fall um, conference in Orlando on 10-22-10-25. So um, I will be having a report for you guys and my council comments in the future on that. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilmember Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to mention the same thing that Linda just mentioned. Congratulations to Andrew, Steve, and Pam for their uh, willingness to serve on the City Council. I think that's wonderful, and congratulations. I know it's not an easy task. Second thing is I want to share a story with the Council members. I've been riding my bike again through the sports complex, Winner's Way. <laughs> <laughs> and... I wanted to share that I think it was Friday or Thursday last week, I went to the sports complex on my bicycle, and it was packed. It was packed with kids, football, soccer. It was literally, the parking lot was full. And I was riding my bike, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go check this out and see what's going on. Well, I was so impressed. They had two volunteers, anybody who passed that gate, they had taking their temperatures for all those kids. Wow. I thought it was really well organized. I felt it was uh, secure. I felt safe. They even tested my temperature because I wanted to ride my bike just to go through just to see what was going on because there were so many people. And I just want to thank city staff and, and uh, Chip Potts. I guess you're in charge of that. I, it's fantastic that we are in control of that and practicing social distancing and getting these kids back on the right track. Thank you. And the other thing I have is, that's it. 
Oh, one other thing, the Frisbee golf, it's tons of people playing Frisbee golf. That has turned out to be a wonderful thing for us. Hmm. Uh, sometimes the grass gets a little high, but it's okay. They still play. <laughs> but other than that, Frisbee golf was very packed. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Quite welcome. Uh, Council Member Knapp. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, October 2nd came and went and breathed a sigh of relief. And I, <laughs> finally a little break, but I'm looking forward to working with everybody up here or whoever might be new uh, in the next three years and serving my hometown as proud as I can. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to give a big shout out to the Tampa Bay Lightning for their great victory yeah. for the Stanley Cup. Uh, just thinking about the story of those guys being away from their families for about two months. You know, that's that's some serious dedication. I don't know if I could pull that off, <laughs> especially with a young family right, right now. And uh, now with the Rays doing the same thing, they actually, I think, allowed their family to enter the bubble with them so they have family uh, traveling with them in their bubble through the playoffs so uh, hopefully we get a victory tonight uh, and then finally i just want to make a quick correction council member norris did get the date right but the day wrong the vfw auxiliary meeting is next thursday october 15th oh goodness so. thank you council <laughs> member now <laughs> just, just minor error uh, and that's all i have mayor thank you very good very good vice mayor Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to also congratulate Andrew, Pamela, and Steve. Not easy to get petition signatures and go to people's doors during a COVID-19 pandemic. Get them to open the door and sign. So different, uh, different methods of campaigning. My hat is off to you, especially you, Andrew, three years in a row. That is something. <laughs> you are a pro. Um, I had my interview with Leadership Pinellas this morning, or this afternoon, rather. I really hope that I have the opportunity to go and represent our city. Um, fantastic organization, really interesting Zoom interview with some tough questions that I mentioned to a couple of you guys earlier tonight. Um, but looking forward to hearing about that. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention was that um, actually Council Member Knapp and I were able to attend the Gold Star Families, uh, Gold Star Mothers uh, a service uh, that was organized by the O'Briens and by the Gross family. Um, and you might recall a couple of weeks back, they came in and um, made a beautiful presentation. Uh, it was held at Veterans Memorial Park on the last Sunday in September, as uh, that day is always um, uh, Gold Star Families Day. And it was a beautiful, small ceremony. There were only a couple of folks there, but everyone there, um, of course, observed social distancing, and, and we all you know, kind of spread out and, and listened to Craig Gross read a proclamation from the governor. Um, Tony gave everybody a yellow rose, even Andrew and myself, a yellow rose to toss into the bay and remember those who have passed in service to this country. It was small and short, but I tell you what, it was a moving little presentation. Um, the plaque that they temporarily affixed until the Veterans Advisory Board meeting uh, was beautiful. Um, and at that uh, ceremony, I also had the opportunity to view and admire the beautiful All Conflicts Memorial, which is now installed at Veterans Memorial Park. So if you have a chance, um, stop by and take a look. It's um, very dignified. It's colorful, the emblems of each of the branches of the military, um, and it lists all the different conflicts with space for more, unfortunately, that I hope we never have to fill. Um, but it's really beautiful opposite the Purple Heart Memorial and I just wanted to thank them all for inviting us to attend and be a part of such a special day. Excellent, yeah. Um, I, and by the way, if you were not aware that the uh, Veterans Affairs Advisory Board I did, did officially approve, approve that. Yes. So yes. The permanent thank you. We might, have, we might have done it backwards, but <clears throat> we managed. All's well that ends well. We managed to get it done. I have a couple of items that I wanted to uh, A, make you aware of, and B, uh, discuss. The first one is celebrate Oldsmar. And we've had this discussion a few times uh, over the years in terms of the amount of extra work that it puts uh, on staff. You know, most of the events that we do are here in the city are done by the chamber, uh, with some exceptions to that, things that only we can really do. And uh, the chamber uh, is planning on uh, coming with a a, uh, a permit request for 
the weekend before uh, Thanksgiving to put on an outdoor event. Uh, would not have uh, uh, would not have carnival rides that type of stuff. It's too soon for that. Uh, but it would be a nice event. Uh, and, and they've asked us if we would entertain that becoming Celebrate Oldsmar. And I'll tell you, it would be the perfect time to put it on, um, in part because the weather's nice. I, I don't know how many Celebrate Oldsmars that we've had a problem with. And, uh, you know, it, it gets expensive and labor intensive when all of a sudden we have staff out there working and now we have to cancel because it's flooded. Um, you know, we, we've been down this road, so we tried moving it uh, multiple times and uh, still have seen problems with it. Uh, this November, I, I wouldn't suggest that there be uh, fireworks from the city this year because that would draw, frankly, too many people, I think, for where we're at. But certainly that could be our role in it in the future. Um, but I would like to kind of get a, get a consensus here, and, and we, we were actually had this discussion about having staff go have a conversation uh, with the chamber about taking that event over, and then we got, you know, the pandemic came, things got canceled, it got shelved. So this isn't really a new, it's just kind of where we're at right now. Uh, and, you know, there's some creative ideas, like doing a Thanksgiving Day parade. Um, not day, but Thanksgiving parade uh, a week early. And uh, potentially making that part of the festivities. So I'm just curious. Any thoughts? Councilmember Seraki. I think it's a great idea. All right. Norris? <laughs> uh, well... Being the chairman of the uh, Centennial Board and, and having the those events for the Centennial, I really enjoy Celebrate Oldsmar ever since I moved here. When I moved here in 95, that was one of the first events I went to, and I was completely blown away. I mean, back then, they would make hamburgers and hot dogs for a dollar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, and chicken sandwiches for a dollar. <laughs> I enjoy having the city staff doing that Celebrate Oldsmar. That's my opinion. I don't know that our staff enjoys it as much as we do. Well, we don't do it anymore. We <laughs> I have, mean, I'm just going to be trucks. very honest. I mean, they're great. They step up. But I've asked them when I'm there, and I'm like, how, you know, would you guys feel like we're taking something away from them because they put so much into it? And I've never really had anybody say, hey, man, I like giving up my, my weekend night <laughs> to be here. Now, folks who want to do it, there's certainly they could continue to volunteer, mm -hmm. you know. But anyhow, well, right, that, fair that's enough. Just my, you know, that's sure. just my opinion. It's only one. Council Member Knapp. Love the idea of cooler weather. I mean, <laughs> Labor Day is, uh, you don't get much of a break yet from either the rain or the heat. So not opposed to it for this year and maybe in subsequent years as well. Um, from the weather perspective, as well as the, the staffing of it, you know, changing it up a little bit. I don't, like you said, they probably enjoy their weekends. <laughs> Vice Mayor, do you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I have really uh, no preference as to the, the date. I think moving it uh, to a little later in the fall, Florida fall, um, certainly makes sense due to past weather issues. And, and certainly even this year, we might have had weather issues if it had gone on as planned. I'm curious as to the substance of the conversations city staff had with the chamber about taking over the, the event in general, before the COVID and without. I would say at this point, there's zero. Okay. We so. had some discussion about it up here, or it was either up here at a council <laughs> meeting or it might have been at a workshop. Um, but we've had some discussion about it, but I don't believe it's ever transpired. Council plan and conference. Council plan and conference. Yeah, I, I recall something vaguely. I would, I don't know if this is the proper moment for it, but I, I would love to hear. Um, something from staff as to what what are the economics of it and is you know if the chamber's willing to take it on or you know or if 
the event need because in the past I had sort of advocated for collapsing celebrate Oldsmar with Oldsmar Days because it was like we're doing these two things, and then putting it in November it's like okay we've got Oktoberfest at the end of October and then we've got this new thing in November and then we do Winter um, Fest and you know it's okay, it's okay to have something every month that's it's not it's not that there's anything wrong with it. Um, but I'm just curious as to a little more input, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, and I'm I, kind the, of, I'm, the, I'm interested. Yeah, the I'm purpose of me bringing it up here is, is you know, uh, that process, right? Let's mm -hmm. discuss it uh, so nobody gets surprised by it and then ask staff to go have that conversation and come back with details. I so would if be there's interested in that consensus of that, we're good with that. So, City Manager, you good with that? Yes, sir. I, I would only ask that regardless of what happens, we acknowledge the incredibly great job Chip has done with every event we have. Oh, no question. Best ever. Oh. I think it's important that, because I think he looks like we shot his dog. <laughs> you think so? Okay. <clears throat> I think like we, he looks like we just bathed his dog. I don't know. <laughs> and I could be wrong about it, but let me tell you something. Here, here's part of my rationale on it. We're putting on more events as a city. Mm -hmm. We're doing these concert series. Okay. Fall music series. We're doing these types of things. Mm -hmm. At some point, we're, what, what's going to happen is either we're just going to stop doing them or we've got to come up with a different method. My own preference, it's not like it's a moneymaker for us, so there's yeah. no financial gain to us. If anything, it's a... You know, it's a budgeted item that we spend fireworks on. Mm -hmm. Well, I, obviously, it's council's decision. I consider it my job to tell you where we get to that point. Of course. And, and to the what you've observed is that we are moving in a different direction, and Chip has come up with a bunch of different events, which work well even with what we've got going on. Yeah. And I don't think any of us are, in principle, against it. I just want to. Oh, I want. I want sure. to keep it positive and just acknowledge that what he's been able to do in balancing them all is that's special. been pretty mm -hmm. that's been pretty amazing well well noted well noted all right um regrettably as it relates to events uh, i do want to make uh, all of you aware that we have made the determination to cancel the uh mayor's christmas breakfast challenge mm. oh, uh yeah. it being an indoor event uh, being relatively soon. Uh, we're hosting it here. We would be hosting it here this year. As you all know, uh, Nielsen's closed. Uh, they're not open to uh, any uh, rental or traffic. Mm -hmm. We did find an alternate location. However, the, the cost of what we looked at just made it where for that event to be successful that way, it requires that you get a few hundred people there. I mean, that's the kind of event it is. That's where it, and so the auction part of it, we're going to put together an online auction, uh, which is very important. Uh, we're gonna try something different and, well, different for us anyhow, run it live uh, for the trees and that kind of stuff uh, and, and still do that kind of thing. We, we need to raise some money uh, because as you know, it funds uh, a, a part of holiday sharing and, and a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the presents that get bought by uh, Rotary. Yeah. And so we have some financial goals. Uh, we think it makes sense to make that decision now. We're going to do that on our own. We're not actually doing that in conjunction with Safety Harbor this year. We'll come back to it next year. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, if we, here was the dilemma. If we waited and planned it and we got closer, and there's a spike or something where we couldn't do it, now all of a sudden we're sitting there scrambling to raise money for the kids. And so I think we decided to err on the side of caution and say let's just shift gear things up this year and uh, let's make sure that we can uh, raise the money. So I might, I might call on some of you all to try to help with getting some, some stuff donated that we can auction off Absolutely. And so that we make sure that uh, that doesn't uh, impact any of our kids' Christmas. Okay. Can I share uh, a short, short story of the mayor's go right breakfast? Ahead. Yeah. The first mayor's breakfast I ever went to, Jerry Bieberlin dressed up in his little purple ballerina dress. 
I have it on videotape somewhere. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was at uh, RJ's. That RJ's. Oh, JR's. 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 And it was Paul and I went for the first time, and he wore this pink, purple poop to whatever it was, and he was dancing around on stage. <laughs> he was the mayor at that time. I just wanted to share that. I'm, I'm going to miss the mayor's breakfast. I love that. I know. It's, it was a fun event, and, and uh, you know, we've always shown, turned up there in big numbers, and it's been nice. Yeah, it just puts you in the right frame of mind going into it, Yeah, it has. All right, so let me uh, congratulate those who have uh, qualified uh, and uh, qualified without an opponent. Those are the best qualifyings to go through, I, I will tell you. <laughs> and so I know that uh, we've got some good folks out there. Uh, I, I want to uh, address something because I continue to be asked about it, and I don't want to let it go. And uh, quite, quite ca candidly, uh, Linda, this has to do with you. Uh, you know, I've been asked multiple times. The council uh, expressed their uh, desire that felt like it would be appropriate for you to resign. Uh, you had uh, shared that you were waiting uh, to make that decision until after you've uh, finished uh, a treatment, I think it was. Um, uh, I, I attempted to call you because uh, people are asking me that question. I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth. Um, you sent, instead of calling back, I know you sent a response, which I think was appropriate, so it went to everybody. Um, but I, I guess the question I would have for you, because I, you and I have talked one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and you have certainly expressed your concerns and um, your regret, but you've been at a couple meetings, and I think it's surprising and disappointing, quite honestly, that you have not made the decision to apologize uh, for publicly, uh, for the position that the city was put in uh, because of your arrest. And while I recognize you've not been committed, uh, convicted, certainly uh, even you made a comment in your email to us all, if events unfold that warrant my resignation, I will do so. It is my hopes that you will respect my decision. I have to tell you publicly that I, I don't respect that decision. I've shared with you why. Uh, and I think that the events that occurred did warrant uh, myself and others suggesting that it would be best that you resign. And so <clears throat> I'm just curious, is it your intention uh, at some point to make some kind of more meaningful public statement uh, to our citizens? Uh, at the next council meeting, I will have a statement, and I'm sorry that you feel that way. Um, I, I, I am not prepared to resign. I do want to become a public advocate for mental health, and so I am not prepared to resign. Okay. All right, well, uh, I, uh, I think a lot of folks will look forward to that public statement. I think it's probably important. Uh, you know, we'd like to see things kind of become uh, resolved so we can continue to stay focused on the people's business, but it is something that is hanging out there. And uh, as mayor, uh, I feel quite compelled to point that out. And so I hope you can respect that. Um, I do. Very good. All right. At that, uh, that's all I got tonight. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I got a motion. Second. I got a second. We're adjourned.